Yo, what's poppin' guys? It's your boy Crooks the Great back at you guys with another banger of a UFC 4 video. And today we're gonna be using Alex Cesaris, aka Bruce Lee Roy, ahead of his fight against Sadiq Yusuf this Saturday. Now, this is only my second time ever using uh, Alex Cesaris in, in this game. I think I've used him once on stream, so uh, one, this is my first time using him since his buff. So instantly, I, I already felt like I can mess with his movement. His movement is very, very good. Uh, his combinations feel very fluid as well. So we're trying to work the legs. This guy's working, doing a good job working the calf kicks. Good combination right there, knocks us back. But we're trying to play at range because he is throwing those calf kicks, which is going to open up a counter if we can kind of bait out. Um, kind of bait out a calf kick, so we're looking for that. As well as just closing the distance with the jab. There, we're able to land a two-piece and not absorb too much damage. Catch him right there with a good front kick, get our first rock. He starts moving his head, so that lets me know when I get him rocked. He probably is going to start to kind of just spin his stick and try to, try to use that evasive... Uh, head movement that is kind of irritating in this game but so far so good catch him with another nicely timed head kick good calf kick right there by him starting to put the pressure on trying to cage cut as as best as possible but cage cutting in this game is not the best man it is not the best even if you have good movement like alex Cesaris does have he catches him he's right there in a slip good stuff putting the pressure on him just with singles and double shots Trying to keep him in front of us. Chopping at those legs when I feel like he is going to major lunge off. So that way it slows down his movement. Right there we counter. But we still got hit with a hook because we did counter the third strike. So here we're just taking our time. Good overhand right there by him. Catch him with a nicely timed uppercut and drop him right there. Not able to jump into his guard. Hits me with a nice calf kick at the end of that combination. And the leg health is starting to go down. But... Like I say, I don't mind going into Orthodox with Southpaw fighters because I prefer to fight in Orthodox. So him chopping at my leg is really of no concern. I'd rather trade leg health for head health in this situation. So we're still catching him with some good shots. He shoots for a takedown right there. We deny it. I'm going to try to press him back up to the cage, which we effectively do, and land a couple of good knees right there to him. He's launching off combinations. We try to backslip. Catch him with a straight on that overhand animation that he did throw out. So we're just applying the pressure. Trying to make him feel like no matter what he does, we're on top of him. That's that's the really the key to having effective pressure in this game. Is to just smother your opponent and make them feel like no matter what they do, you're just constantly in their face. You don't need to block break. Just walk forward. People don't like you walking forward at them. It starts to make them feel kind of uneasy and makes them uh, speed up their timing just a little bit. And sometimes you can get finishes off of that. Nicely timed combination right there by him. Broke our block all the way down. We barely missed on that uppercut. And with five seconds left, we pretty much got this round in the bag, but we secure it again with another rock right there. That's the end of the first round. Very, very solid work from us there in the first round. We did get a knockdown off of that counter body or that counter uppercut on that body shot. We were able to stun him multiple times. That doesn't mean anything in UFC 4, so we still got to be careful not to overcommit on strikes. He did try to touch gloves right there, and I didn't do it, so my bad if you're watching this video. Did not mean to do that. There he throws a good knee. He's still chopping at those legs, which is good. We're trying to bait out a leg kick. Nicely timed as we entered in the pocket right there by him. And I like that he's major lunging off. We can maybe catch him with a with a head kick, but he shoots for a takedown. We deny it again right there. Go with a knee, then a punch to the head. He's trying to break through the block. Clinches us right here. He's going to go for a takedown, but we're quick on the denial. He's launching off combos. We're just trying to change up the beat of the combinations that we're throwing at. We're not trying to stay consistently throwing at the same rate. That's what I feel like a lot of uh, I feel like a lot of people don't understand when I talk about offbeat combinations or like changing up your rhythm. If you're throwing at the same rhythm, it's easier for somebody to catch on to than if you're just switching up rhythms in between combinations. Super important if you're trying to be a really good striker at UFC 4 or at, uh, any UFC game really to be honest with you. So we're blasting him with a good combination. Caught him right there with a nicely timed jab hook. Drop him again. Shoots for a takedown. But that time he is going to get it because he didn't drive me. 
I thought he was going to do a driving takedown, so I went to deny the driving takedown. But he just shot for a regular double. Now we're sitting in guard. Pretty comfortable here. Not too worried about too much stuff. He's punching, trying to gain that GA. He fakes and postures up. Good stuff. Hitting the body. Nice work. We pull him back down. Now we're just punching because I see that he wasn't falling for the fakes. So we're just punching to gain that GA. We get full GA because we didn't bite on his fake. We're back up to our feet. He launches off another overhand right there. So now, so far, so good in this second round. I mean, we have absorbed a considerable amount of damage, but we're not looking too bad. We just need to be aware of that overhand that he is throwing as we minor step that, that straight that he threw and cracked him with a good shot, hurt him. Now we're putting on the pressure. We missed right there on the head kick, and luckily we weren't able to make, we weren't, we didn't get made to pay for that, which is really, really good. So just trying to take our time. Good straight lead hook right there, stuns him. Going back down to the body. Just walking forward. Like I said, we're not necessarily block breaking. We're just we're just putting the pressure on him. Trying to get him to make a mistake so that way we can capitalize on it. Right there, try to catch him with a three-piece, but only one shot landed. Right there, good combination as he stepped off. Double jabbing into that block. Catch him with a straight lead hook again, but we don't get the stun this time. Barely miss on the front kick. So now we're just walking forward. Catch him with a double jab into a straight. We're going for a ground and pound scenario here. Trying to get him out. He's doing a good job of blocking. He slipped off that straight punch, but we do hit him with a hook. That's going to be the end of the second round. This guy has eaten so much damage with a creative fighter. I don't know how people do it because when I've used creative fighters, my chin health be going straight down if I get hurt. So that this guy has been able to survive is a thing of a, is a, is a it's really a sight to behold, to be honest with you. But now we're putting the pressure on him. And like I said, I want to make him make a mistake. So we're just walking forward. We're going to start trying to counter like we do right there with a nice block counter. Go down to the body three times. Knock him down. Trying to go for the finish. We're not able to get it, but we do have him up against the cage, which is where we want him. We drop him again with a lead hook or a lead uppercut straight. So now I'm just trying to apply the pressure, trying to slip one of his combinations maybe and get a finish. We're applying the pressure. Double jabbing into that block just to lower it down. He's still trying to move off. Crack him with a three punch, four punch combination right there. Just chasing him around, but not following him too heavy. Knock him down with a nicely timed head kick right there. But we're not neglecting the body as well. We're still going to the body. We just need to be careful not to eat an uppercut. Shoots for a takedown, but we're quick on that denial. So now I feel him starting to wilt. I feel him starting to break, so we're just going to keep this pressure in his face. Crack him with a nicely timed straight as he tried to throw a moving straight. Hit him to the body. It's not looking too good for him right here. Just smothering him with the pace that we're putting on him right there. And catch him with that nicely timed pull straight. And we're able to get him out of there. But great, great first fight. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the second fight that we do have for you guys here on the video with Bruce Leroy. So here we are, guys. We are in the second fight. Other video, and we're going up against Rude Knight and Anthony Pettis, and we're still using Alex Cesaris here in featherweight. This matchup, honestly, is going to be a little bit, can be a little bit of a tough matchup because Anthony Pettis does have good uh, footwork as well, but he doesn't have the best health stats, so we're going to be looking good if we can get some, uh, if we can get some damaging strikes off. Like we're already doing, we're starting to set the pace just a little bit, applying the pressure. Sorry if you guys can hear the airplane going over the top of my house. Like I said, I do live over by an airport. So, you know, it's kind of just the way it goes. But we're catching him with some good strikes. We catch the body teep right there. We're going to go ahead and push him down. That's going to drain the body health. I'm trying to crack his body. Catch him with a nice three-piece. He goes with an uppercut, so I need to be careful. Now he's missing. He's whiffing on shots. We heard his leg right there because he did try to major lunge off the side of the cage. Heard him again right there. He's in all sorts of trouble, but he's able to escape with the nice lateral movement of Anthony Pettis. Crack him with a two-piece. Try to go for a three-piece, but just barely missed. And now we're having a lot of success real early in this round. So we're just trying to keep it going. Waiting for him to adjust, which he's starting to do now. Crack him with a good three-piece. We could have gotten major damage off that missed uppercut that he did throw. 
So now we're just taking our time, chopping at that leg of Anthony Pettis because we did have it hurt. But now he's in southpaw, so he's trying to mirror the same stance as me. So now that's, that rear body kick that I was throwing at the beginning of the round is not going to be open unless I switch to orthodox. So now he's starting to work the body, and I see that. So maybe we can set up a block counter. Nicely timed jumping back kick to the body right there by him into a front kick. Nice stuff. Hit him with a good combination of our own. Now we switch. So that way that, that open side is to the rear body kick of us. So see how he's throwing that lead body kick? It's not doing as much damage as it would do if we if I was in the same stance. So we're just trying to take our time. He's still going to that body heavy, especially right there with the knee. So we're going to start trying to set up a block counter because he is going heavy. Try to go with the question mark kick. We go with a nicely timed combination right there. There it is. We blocked the first one, but I didn't want to throw out a counter just to see what he's going to do. Is he, is he going to try to sway back and try to get a counter off himself? But it didn't look like he was going to do it right there. So now we're back in southpaw. Now he's starting to apply a little bit of pressure of his own. Nice combination right there by him. Trying to take back the center of the octagon, which we do effectively right here. Catch him with a nicely timed uppercut, then rip down to the body. Then try to go back up to the head. Not trying to overcommit on body punches, but we are working the body. We just barely missed on that uppercut. As he was going down for a body shot. Just taking our time. Putting the pressure on. Not rushing anything. Crack him with a nice four punch combination. And that's going to be the end of the first round. We did get a lot of damage off to Anthony Pettis. But towards the end of the round he started to pick it up. He started to pick it up. Which is what you need to do when you're in a bad spot. You need to either increase your pace. Or you need to slow it down and start making better reads. And he started to, to increase his pace a little bit increase the volume of strikes that were coming out so now it's on us to adapt and we do so effectively right there we heard him pushing him back up to the cage ripping to the body and look he's rotating that stick so that lets me know i need to go down to the body a little bit more maybe get a body finish catch him with an uppercut as he tried to go with a body straight just mixing him up here catch him with another good lead uppercut hit him with a spinning back fist that setup is nasty hit him with another one knock him down it's only a matter of time, Anthony Pettis. It's only a matter of time. And there it was. Another uppercut gets the job done. Bruce Leroy is definitely a fun, fun fighter to use in this game. Let me tell you guys. If you haven't used him, go and use him. He is might be my new main in featherweight other than Cub Swanson. So that's the last fight that I do have for you guys on the video. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to slap that subscribe button as well as slap that like button to be much appreciated. But until the next video, guys, thank you guys for stopping by, and I will see you guys in the next one.